Okay, students, so we will continue our lectures. This is lecture number nine. Now, we want to talk about half cells and electrode potentials. Now, if you were asked to prepare or to set up an electrochemical cell, a voltaic cell, uh, the recorded um, voltage would be something like about 0.46. Now, where did this come from? Why is it that with a copper, with a copper electrode and a silver electrode on the other side, why is it that we got 0.46? These are the questions we want to, to answer. Now, in this setup, silver turns out to be the, the positive electrode, which is the cathode, and copper turns out to be the negative electrode, which is the anode. Now, this is because silver has a stronger ability to, uh, to, to attract electrons or to accept electrons um, versus copper. The overall, the overall cell reaction is where we have copper, copper getting converted or getting oxidized, that is changing from copper zero to copper two plus and silver uh, plus uh, changing to silver zero, that is a reduction. Now we want to go deeper into this and to understand which reaction will or which which on, in which electrochemical cell will have a reduction which will which will have a oxidation in as uh, we kind of outlined in the previous lecture and, and also to calculate the cell potential now the first thing i must say is that the overall cell potential that is the potential that you will read on your voltmeter comes from a, a contribution from both of the half cells that is from both electrodes and the reduction potential of both electrodes, or I should say maybe half, uh, each electrode, is a characteristic of that electrode, of that metal. For example, copper 2 plus copper 0 has a characteristic potential. Zinc 2 plus zinc 0 has a characteristic potential. And so it is true also for silver, silver 0. Now, in order to determine the characteristic potential of an electrode, Measurement against a standard electrode must be carried out um, under standard conditions. As a matter of fact, if it's not standard conditions, then you can't really call it a standard electrode. The standard hydrogen electrodes is one of the most important um, standard electrodes. Of course, there are other standard electrodes, such as the uh, standard silver-silver chloride electrode, and also the standard columnar electrodes. There are other standard electrodes, but the standard hydrogen electrodes, um, commonly called the Xi, is one of importance for us. Now, the standard hydrogen electrode is not regularly used because to prepare or to set up the standard hydrogen electrode um, gives a lot of work. It takes, it takes some time to set up the standard hydrogen electrode. Now, the standard hydrogen electrode is composed of a piece of platinum metal immersed in a one molar acid solution over which hydrogen gas is bubbled at one atmosphere of pressure. The standard hydrogen electrode is designated a, a potential, a standard potential of 0, 0.00 volts. That is, the standard hydrogen electrode does not contribute to the overall cell potential when it is when it is made part of a cell the reaction the reduction reaction that occurs or the reduction reaction of the standard hydrogen electrode is where h plus um, accepts to accept electrons to form hydrogen gas of course you will see that this reaction will be reversed when you connect the standard hydrogen electrode to um, form a, an, a, an electrochemical cell a voltaic cell in determining the standard reduction potential of a piece of metal or an electrode. Another thing I must point out is that in operating the standard electrode, the temperature must be 25 degrees Celsius. In our walk up to you, somebody just walk up to you and they give you a piece of metal and they say, "Look, this metal is is copper." Go and, de go and determine the standard reduction potential. Now, the fact that I said reduction potential, and remember the potential values given to you are always given as reduction potentials, meaning that these are the values measured when you try to reduce um, uh, 
a particular metal ion. Reduction occurs at the cathode. Remember that, oxidation at the anode. Now when trying to determine the reduction potential of a piece of metal, let's say a piece of copper, what you need to do is to prepare a one molar solution of, um, of the salt or of some salt of copper. A good convenient one to use is copper sulfate. So you prepare one molar solution, you prepare a one molar solution of copper sulfate and you immerse in that solution the copper metal and connect via wires that piece of metal to the standard hydrogen electrode and also connect the two half cells as shown here in this diagram via a salt bridge. Now, the metal to be tested is made the cathode, whereas the, the, the standard hydrogen electrode is made to be the anode, where oxidation occurs. That is, the reaction at the anode will go from hydrogen gas to produce H plus ions, that is from hydrogen zero to hydrogen plus. Now, given that, given that, the standard hydrogen electrode has a designated value of 0, 0.0 volts, whatever value is read on the voltmeter will be due to the metal to be tested. Seeing that, the way in which we calculate the E cell is E cathode minus E anode, as you will see on this slide. Now, so the, the cell is written with the assumption that the right-hand electrode is the cathode. And this is normally the convention that we use. Right-hand electrode is the cathode. Left-hand electrode is the anode. Now, what we can write, we can also write a shorthand notation. Let's say we're looking at the Daniel cell, for example. For the Daniel cell, the anode is, uh, is zinc, right? It's solid zinc. And the anodic solution or the electrolyte at the anode could be zinc sulfate. At the cathode, the cathode is copper solid, copper metal, whereas the cathodic electrolyte is copper sulfate solution. And so what you could use is what we call standard cell notation. So as you can see here, you have zinc solid separated by um, what you would call it now, a solid line. And then you have the zinc sulfate solution, aqueous. And that half cell is separated by the other half cell by two uh, solid lines indicating the presence of the salt bridge and external connecting wires and also the absence of liquid junction potential. And then we have copper sulfate solution separated from the copper metal which is the electrode and that solid line there between copper sulfate solution and copper metal really indicates the interface between copper sulfate solution and the copper metal the solid liquid interface now what if you are asked to calculate the expected potential um the expected overall cell potential now first thing you have to remember is that the potentials given to you for these um, species are given as reduction. That is, when silver, when we try, not silver, when we try to reduce copper 2 plus, right, that is by adding two electrons to convert copper 2 plus to copper 0, the potential that we get is plus 0 0.34 volts, right, so that's a positive potential. When we try, however, to reduce zinc 2 plus by adding two electrons, we end up with a potential of minus 0 0.76 volts. These are the reduction potential values. Why? Why are they called reduction potentials? Because they are obtained when you try to reduce the metal ion to the solid metal. Now, these potentials should be used as given. You don't need to flip the signs on them. I have seen cases in books where they tell you you can flip and you can do this and you can do that, but that is a lot to remember and I'm saying we can avoid all of that. Use them as given, okay? And you don't need to multiply them. You don't need to multiply the potential values. Now, now that we, we are clear on where these values come from, we have to understand something else. The fact that the value for zinc is negative tells us that the reaction as written is non-spontaneous. It tells us that zinc 2 plus is not very receptive. 
right? It is not very happy to accept two electrons to form zinc solid. In other words, zinc solid would rather to lose two electrons to form zinc 2 plus. The fact that this value is negative tells us that it, this reaction would, would more likely occur at the anode. So right away I'm saying that the more negative potential will be at the anode. All right, the reaction with the most negative potential occurs at the anode. And that reaction, you will need to reverse it. You will need to reverse the reaction, not the, not the sign on the potential, just the reaction. And I said most negative because you could have a situation where you have two negative potential values. So it is the most negative that goes to the anode. As you can see below, right, you can see below what I did was to reverse the zinc equation such that we have zinc solid being converted to zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons. I did not interfere or, or change the sign on the potential for that reaction. It is still minus 0 0.76 volts. For copper, for the copper reaction, we still have copper 2 plus accepting two electrons to give you copper solid because that is the reaction that occurs at the cathode. At the cathode, it's a reduction reaction that we have occurring. That is what happens at, at the cathode. So we did not reverse that reaction. All right. The next thing we need to do is to cancel the electrons, of course, ensuring that we have the same number of electrons in both equations. Why is it that we need to have the same number of electrons in both equations? The electrons produced at the anode, that is from the zinc reaction, are the same electrons that will travel all the way over to the cathode. Right? to reduce the metal ions in solution. So if the reaction at the anode is producing 10 electrons, then the reaction at the, at the cathode must be such that it is accepting 10 electrons. So if it was a case where the cathodic reaction was not able to accept two electrons, then you'll have to multiply the cathodic equation by a factor such that the electrons are the same in both equations. Now, the next step is to cancel away the two electrons. So you cancel away the two electrons and then add the equations. When you add the equations, then you have the overall equation. Now, how do you calculate the standard cell potential? It is E cathode minus E anode. Of course, some books will write it as E right minus E left. But we have to be careful because there are some textbooks which, which do not put the cathode as the right hand electrode. So I like to say E cathode minus E anode. Earlier we decided that it is a copper reaction that will occur at the cathode and the zinc reaction that will occur at the anode. And so what we have now for the E cell, the standard cell potential is 0.34 volts minus negative 0.76 volts to give us 1.10 volts. Now, that is interesting because it can tell us that the sign on the standard cell potential can give you an idea of reaction spontaneity. If the sign on the standard cell potential is negative, it means that the reaction is non-spontaneous. That is, the overall cell reaction is non-spontaneous. All right? We can also relate we can also relate the standard cell potential to the Gibbs free energy change, which gives us some information because the Gibbs free energy change is equal to the negative of the electrical work done by the system or negative of charge transferred per mole times the potential against which the charge is transferred. In other words, delta G for the cell reaction, the standard free energy change for the cell reaction, that is, is equal to minus NFE. E naught, of course, where N is the charge transferred or the number of moles of electrons. In our zinc copper cell, the number of moles of electrons was two. It was two, right? Because remember, two electrons are produced at the anode. Those same two electrons travel over to the cathode. So it's two moles of electrons. 
2 moles of electrons times the Faraday, which is 96,485 coulombs per mole. And the Faraday is just the charge on one mole of electrons. In other words, if you know the charge on one electron, multiply that number by uh, the Avogadro's number, and you, you will get the, 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 the Faraday's, the Faraday constant. E cell, of course, it would be the E cathode minus E anode. Now, here it is. Delta G, that is the standard free energy change for the reaction, is given by minus NFE. And here we have the numbers. And so for that cell, that is the Daniel cell, we have a value of minus 212.3 kilojoules per mole. And it's negative, indicating that the cell reaction is spontaneous, that is, it will proceed as given. Now we can do a little bit more work. We can do a little bit more work because the question that we could ask now, what if we change the concentration of the copper solution or the zinc solution? How does this affect the potential coming out of the cell? Now Walter Nernst developed an equation, developed an equation um, back in the days that allows us to assess the potential coming out of the cell as a function of concentration of the species um, in solution. And what Walter Nernst is saying is that the cell potential is equal to the standard cell potential minus RT um, 2.303 over NF, where N is the number of moles of electrons. F is the Faraday's constant. Of course, R is the universal gas constant and T is temperature times log of Q. Q is a reaction quotient. And here we have a derivation for the Nernst equation. Right? Here's a derivation for the Nernst equation. And we already know how to calculate Q. Right? It is the activity of products raised to their coefficients over the activity of the reactant, of course, raised to their coefficients.